Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for entertainment purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, Y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. You guys, today's video is like, oh, it is just so unbelievable. I will never forget the first time I heard this story years ago. Now, the, today's video is gonna be a little bit different from my typical true crime videos, but this one, will stick with you, I assure you of that, okay? This story is so horrific that the professionals that treated the victim in this case had to get therapy themselves afterwards because of what they saw. Today's story is going to be the story of Charla Nash and Sandra Harold and the chimpanzee Travis. Have you guys heard about this? I heard this story on Oprah right after I had gotten out of prison and it just stuck with me. It's one of those stories that you hear that you will just never ever forget. In 1938, Sandra Harold was born in Connecticut to her Jewish mother and her Italian father. They owned a local bakery that was super duper popular, like everybody knew them and their little bakery. I could just imagine, you know, like the breads and all the stuff on the shelves and the different kind of like pastries and yummy, yummy goodness. Sandra, who was an only child who pretty much always kind of wore her hair the same, like dark bangs, straight dark hair, spent most of her days playing with her German shepherd Gretchen and the horses that her parents had on the property. When Sandra finished high school, she married right after she got out of high school and that marriage didn't last very long and she divorced her first husband. Then at 22, she married her second husband who she was head over heels in love with you guys. Like she just thought he was the most charming, romantic, like really woos you like a Casanova type of dude. Unfortunately, her second husband was that romantic Casanova woo you type of dude to many different women. And he had many, many different affairs. So that marriage only lasted for four years. At 30 years old, Sandra married her third husband, Jerry Harold, who ended up being her husband for the rest of her life. Jerry Harold was very well known and well loved. He was a businessman. He really treated Sandra right. He treated her great. And he even accepted her daughter Suzanne from her second marriage as his own. Little Sue was like a little miniature Sandy, except for she had blonde hair. So you guys gotta understand, Sandra was an only child with her parents and now Sue is an only child with Sandra and Jerry. Now Jerry owned a bunch of different businesses including a tow trucking company that was really popular in their town. Sandra helped her husband run the businesses and was super duper duper close with her daughter Sue. I'm talking about super super close. But unfortunately for Sandra, Sue grew up. She fell in love with a man that actually worked at Jerry's, one of Jerry's businesses, and she moved away. Now, when she moved away, Sandra became very, very bitter. Sandra was not happy that her daughter moved away and was married and was having her own life, but nevertheless, she did. So Sandra beca became a little bit depressed and was looking for a way to fill that void in her life. And somehow, some way, she got connected with somebody that was in a different state and she decided she was going to purchase a baby chimpanzee. Now we have all seen the videos, okay? We've all seen the videos of the cute little chimpanzees in diapers and we're just like, oh, I want one. So cute. I want one. Well, she said the same thing except for she actually did get one. In 1995, Sandra purchased her little baby chimpanzee for $50,000 cash. 
That's in 1995 too, okay? $50,000 is a lot of money now, but back in 1995, you could just imagine it was like double or triple the amount of money. Sandra said she would never forget getting that phone call. The phone call said, your baby's here, and Sandra rushed down to the airport to get her package, which she opened up, and she saw was a little three-day-old baby chimpanzee in a little diaper. She was holding it three days old, you guys. Like, oh my gosh, you know how their face is, oh my gosh, so adorable. Sandra held her little baby, and when the little champ chimpanzee took his little feet in his hands and wrapped them around her fingers, she started crying right there in the airport. Like, this was going to complete her. This was her baby, a little boy chimpanzee that Sandra and her husband Jerry named Travis after their favorite, like, music artist, Travis Tripp. Now, Sandra fell in love love with Travis, her little baby boy, her little chimpanzee. I bet she did too. I bet he was so cute. She changed his diapers. She bottle fed him. She burped him. She put him in his bed. I mean, they it was the whole nine yards. I mean, she bathed him. This was her baby, you guys. As Travis started getting older, she taught Travis how to use the toilet. He went into the refrigerator and would get something to drink if he wanted something to drink. Sandra and her husband, Jerry, rearranged their whole entire entire house to accommodate their new little chimpanzee baby, Travis. It was said that throughout their whole entire house, they had rope swings, they had tires, they had all different kinds of stuff, nets and stuff. That way Travis could just swing from one room to the next room. And then in the back of their house, which they had a pretty big house on a nice piece of property, if I do say so myself, I mean, they were multiple business owners, successful multiple business owners that in the back part of their house, they put like these big steel doors and like all of this stuff and did an outside enclosure that away when Sandra and Jerry left, like if they had to go anywhere or do anything that they could leave Travis in that part of the house that way he wasn't like locked in a cage. So he had free roam to like go outside in this big enclosure and come inside. Like he had it set up. Travis was living the chimpanzee dream when I tell you, but that's not all. I mean, they took, they took, Travis into town with them too. They didn't always leave him at home. Like he would ride in the cars and everybody in the town started knowing who Travis was. He was like a little local celebrity. I mean, he was Travis the chimpanzee. He was super friendly to everybody. He even became the mascot of their tow trucking business. And on Jerry and Sandra's tow trucks, I mean, like they had the picture of the big champ chimpanzee all down the side. Okay. And they also, you guys, they had their business, their tow trucking business set up for Travis as well. They had rope swings, they had trampolines in it. So they started bringing Travis to work with them every single day. So Travis was literally, it was their child. It was part of their everyday life. The people that drove the tow trucks would like come in from work and they would see Travis and they would just gush over him. Like everybody loved him. The local police would come up and they would hold Travis. They would play with him and wrestle with him and stuff. Like Travis was just loved by all. You guys, Travis was so doggone spoiled. They were feeding this chimpanzee filet mignon and lobster. I, I'm not joking. Like, can I come? Like, I'll uh, listen. I'll put on a diaper. I ain't got no problem putting on a diaper. I don't know about no rope swing because my upper body strength ain't too good. But, I mean, like the. Y'all got an extra seat at the table. That's how I'm feeling. Anyway, so they were really just. I mean, the doggone chimpanzee slept in the bed with her and her husband. That, I mean, this was their baby. Okay, you know, can you just imagine? You guys know how it is when you have kids and they're like kicking you. Like, you got a doggone chimpanzee arm like in your face in the mornings, like. They, they bathed. Oh my gosh, I forgot to say, they took showers and they bathed with this chimpanzee. Now, I mean, I'm not trying to judge anybody, but I don't get in the bath with my dogs, like, you know, like in the ocean or something, maybe, but like in the bath. Nevertheless, that, that was their thing. They This was their baby. They did everything with this baby. Even the local restaurants allowed Travis to come in and sit at the table and eat there. So they would take this chimpanzee that was their baby Travis, Travis the chimp, and they would go into restaurants and, you know, you got to imagine everybody at the restaurants, they're probably like, oh, there he is, you know, and that they loved it. Sandra and her husband loved it. And he would sit there and he would eat his probably doggone $700 meal probably at these restaurants. I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying, but like, that's, that's the life that this chimpanzee lived. Eventually, 
Sandra's daughter ended up divorce, divorcing her husband and she had a small son by her husband and she moved back home. So Jerry and Sandra built her like this little like place to live in or like a little house or a little mother-in-law suite. Not really sure what it's called, but like a little house right there on their property near them. And Sue's son, she had like a little son, was around the same age as Travis the chimp and they played together so well. So you guys got to imagine like Sandra sitting out there with her grandson and her, her baby son, which is the chimpanzee and they're playing together. They're wrestling. Her actual grandson taught Travis how to ride a tricycle and how to play catch. And you know, they were just all one big giant happy family. Well, Sue, Sandra's daughter ended up meeting another guy falling in love with him and having a couple children by him and deciding she was going to move away again. Sandra was infuriated. She was losing her daughter again. She was super mad, but you know, what could she do about it this time? I mean, her daughter's a grown woman. She's building this family with this new man. Well, Suzanne started like moving her stuff because her and her new husband was moving out of town, right? So she starts coming and getting her stuff from her mom's, the, the property on her mom's and taking it out of town and making trips back back and forth. In September of 2000, Suzanne had come to her mom's house to get her stuff and allegedly was having some back problems. And her back was hurting from all of the lifting and the traveling, so she took a pain pill. And she was driving late at night with her infant daughter in the back seat of her car on the way back to where her and her husband had just got their new house. And she was going around a curve and she went off the side of the road and she ran into a tree. Now, her infant daughter that was in the back seat was completely strapped in and she was completely fine, not a scratch on her. Sandra's daughter, Sue, unfortunately, did not have a seatbelt on. She was ejected from the car and died right there on the spot. Now, when Sandra had a funeral for her daughter, she lost it. She lost it on the husband, yelling at him in the in the funeral parlor. This is your fault. This is your fault. My daughter has passed away and all this stuff. And it was just a mess. Sandra did not take it well at all. However, she had no choice but to, you know, keep on living. So she just lived for this chimpanzee Travis, which was her son and her husband, Jerry. Sometime after Sue's daughter had sadly passed away, she asked her friend Charla to come move to Connecticut to where she was. Now, Charla was a friend that was around her age. Now, Charla grew up as a lifelong animal lover too. She actually even rode in rodeos whenever she was younger and like the rodeo guys gave her a nickname, Charlie. And she left home when she was really young at 17. And just a couple years after she had left home, she met Sandra at a horse auction and they became best friends. Now they got to see each other when they would travel and different times like that, but they did live in different states for a really long time up until this point. Sandra asked Charla to move to Connecticut. Charla was living as a single mom with her teenage daughter, Brie. So she decided, sure, like why not move, you know, where my best friend is. My best friend owns all these businesses. She's gonna give me a job. I'm, it's just me and my daughter. Why not? Let's go on an adventure. So Charla moved to Connecticut to work for her friend Sandra. Now, Charla said she kind of had a, she was a little bit scared of Travis. She said the first time she met Travis, Travis came running up to her pub and like grabbed a handful of her hair and kind of pulled her hair out and it brought tears to Charla's eyes. She said Sandra kind of laughed about it, which that bothered me to hear. Like, I mean, I... These are strong animals, okay? They may be cute when they're in their little, but even when they're in their diapers, man, these are very, very, very strong animals. You know, she had already packed up, moved all of her stuff then, but she said she always was kind of scared of Travis, which must have been really confusing for her, especially because you saw his face everywhere in town and he was like the town's mascot. But nevertheless, she's there with her teenage daughter and she starts becoming like Sandra's basically do girl. She's doing everything for her. She's doing stuff for the tow truck company. She's running errands for her. She's just doing anything and everything for her that she needs as an employee, but also as a friend. Now, remember how I told you guys that Travis lived like a like a human, like their kid. Now Travis is getting older and I'm pretty sure chimp years are like kind of maybe like dog years or something. I don't know. It's probably not like our years. Okay, so to say. 
Well, one night Jerry was sitting at the house and they would drink wine every single night. Sandra and her husband Jerry would drink wine and Travis watched them. You know, he's picking up on their cues and Travis crawls up into Jerry's lap. He takes his wine glass, he takes a sip and he likes it. From then on out, you guys, Travis had to have him his own wine glass, y'all. So he's sitting there at night times drinking wine with his mommy and daddy, which is Jerry and Sandra. So like Sandra's just like in hog heaven. Unfortunately, she had lost her daughter, but now she's got her best friend living in town. She's got her husband who she loves so much. And she's got her kid, Travis, who is a doggone wine drinking, lobster eating, rope swinging chimpanzee. Now in 2003, Sandra was driving in town with Travis in the passenger seat and some little hoodlum takes a like empty Coke bottle and throws it through the window and Travis loses it. He, he gets out of the car and like traffic is screw, screw, screw. I mean, you got to, there's a big old chimpanzee like in the middle of the street, like crawling on cars. The person that threw the bottle like run, just bucked it, which I don't blame him. I would have been running too. Are you flip flopping kidding me? That thing is just going. But Travis had traffic held up for Hours. They could not get Travis back in the car. Of course, people were calling 911 and saying, hey, there's a monkey loose, there's an ape loose, there's a chimpanzee loose, he's on the loose, da 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 da. You know, people were a little bit frightened when, you know, you're just trying to drive and you hear the crinkle of the roof of your car and then you see big feet walking down the front glass. Like, it's, it's a little scary, okay? He's cute when he's on the side of a, a, a truck, but it's a whole nother issue when he's on top of your car. Well, the cops get there and nobody could get him back in but he was kind of like laughing and playing and swinging from car to car but you know still he was just not being able to be controlled he even started chasing some of the cops and the people who had stopped in the traffic because they couldn't move they were cheering and laughing but still this is a chimpanzee that's on the loose right well, they tried to give him like macadamia nuts. They tried to give him cookies. And eventually after hours, they had to tranquilize him. When he fell asleep, they got him in the car and they were able to take him home. After that, Sandra and Jerry decided not to take him back into town anymore because it caused a big ruckus in their town. I mean, the states got involved, animal control got involved in everything. I mean, you gotta think some of these people might've been laughing and cheering, but it's still, it's a wild animal like holding up traffic for hours and chasing the police. Kind of can't let that happen. So they implemented this new rule that if you had any kind of chimpanzee or any kind of wild animal like that, you had to have a permit. However, they did not make Sandra and Jerry get that same permit for what reason I will never understand because they knew Travis and they had known Travis for all these years at this point and they felt like he was their local celebrity and they were their it was their town mascot I mean Travis had even been on the Maury Povich show this chimpanzee had been on TV I mean it was their little local celebrity so they implemented this rule but they did not make Sandra and Travis and Jerry follow this rule Animal control, they got involved and they was pretty upset about it because they said, listen, they talked to Sandra on the phone. They said, listen, ma'am, I know that you're having fun with your chimpanzee and everything. And I know that he's cute and you got him, you know, eating his little lobster and taking pictures and everything. But let me tell you something. Adult male chimps are known and notorious to be violent. In the wild, adult male chimpanzees mate with multiple different chimps up to 50 times a day. You guys, that's a lot of like aggression or release or testosterone that needs to be released on a daily basis. Okay, that's a lot. 50 times a day, ew. And they also have the strength to at least five grown men. Okay, an adult chimpanzee is as strong as at least five grown men, okay? The strength is out of this world. But even with all of that talk and animal control, really, really, really trying to convince Sandra that maybe she should not have this adult chimpanzee because they're unpredictable, especially when they get older, she would not hear it. This was her son and her baby. So she just decided, okay, we're just not gonna take him in public at all anymore. We're just gonna keep him here at home. Like, I don't wanna deal with these people. We're gonna just keep him at home. 
Unfortunately, Travis became depressed. I mean, this, this chimpanzee was used to going out to fine dining restaurants, honey. He was used to going to, you know, their work and being around all these different people and like going and having his pictures taken and flying on airplanes. He was not no stay at home chimpanzee. He wanted to be out and about. Then on top of that, in April of 2005, Jerry, Sandra's husband, passed away from cancer. And it is said that Travis had a really hard time and probably, I don't even know if he ever understood what happened. Sandra said that Travis would sit at the door and wait for Jerry to come in every single day and he never came because he had passed away. And that if he smelt something that had his Jerry's scent on it, like maybe a shirt, he would go crazy <laughs> all around the house. But unfortunately he was dead and Travis didn't understand. Now at this point, all Sandra has left in her life is her and Travis. Her only daughter has passed away. Her husband has now passed away. And now it's just her and Travis and her best friend, Charla, who is now working for her and coming around and basically running the business for her at this point. In February of 2009, when Travis was 14 years old, he somehow got Sandra's keys and opened up the house and got out of the house and was like, running around in their area, going through the trees and stuff like that. And she could not get him back in. And she was super concerned that maybe he was going to just run away or maybe hurt himself or something like that. So Sandra called her best friend, Charla, to come over to help her get Travis back inside. When Charla got there, she grabbed Travis's favorite toy, which was this like red Elmo. You remember the baby Elmos? It was like a squeaky toy. And she went outside and she was calling him and she was squeaking it to see if she could get him to come and he did come, and unfortunately, well, I'll just let you guys listen to the 911 phone call. 911, where's your emergency? Oh, this is Sandy, 231 Rock, Rock Crimson Road. What's send the problem? The police. Send the police. What's they, the problem there? The, the, the chip killed my, my friend. What's the problem with your friend? Oh, please. What's the problem with your friend? I need to know. Send the police. With a gun! Hurry you're, you're up! You're off a gun! Please, hurry up! He's killing my girlfriend! What is the problem? He's killing my friend! Who's killing your friend? Chim my chimpanzee! Oh, your chimpanzee Please. is killing your friend! Yes. She, he ripped her apart! Hurry up! With a gun. Hurry up, please! There's someone on the way! With guns, please! You shoot him! What is the monkey doing? Tell me what the monkey's doing! He, he ripped her face off! He ripped her face off? <laughs> Okay, hurry. I need you to calm down a little bit. They're on the way. Can you push yourself away? I don't want the monkey Get attacking you. Here. Please hurry up! Listen to me! Uh, they're on the oh, way, ma'am. They gotta shoot them, please! Please hurry, hurry! Are you there with your friend? I need you to help your friend. Can you go help your friend? I can't. He tried to attack me now. Is he still there with your friend? Yes. Okay, so then back off. Then don't get any closer, please. okay? They're already on the way. Please. If the monkey moves away from your friend, let me know, okay? So we could try I to help your friend. No, no, I can't. She's dead. She's dead. Why Why are you saying that she's dead? She's dead. He ripped her apart. He ripped what apart? Her face? My, everything. He ripped her apart? Listen, I think I'm going to flee. I think I'm going to pass No, no, just breathe, okay? I'm going to stay I with you on the phone until they get there. Listen, please hurry. Please, please hurry. <laughs> oh, my God. They got to have their guns out. They got out their guns out. Listen to me. Oh my God. <sighs> is this your monkey or whose monkey yes. is it? It's your monkey. No, it's mine. He's how, a, how, do you know how big is he? How, yes, how many 200 pounds? pounds? 400? 200. 200 pounds? Listen to me, please. Where are they? Where are they? And he's a chimp, correct? Yes. Where, is, where are they? They're going your way. They're going as fast as they can your way, okay? Please. Please go faster. Please, please, Derek, please, 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 please. Is the monkey still by your friend, or can you get yes, close to your friend? He's eating her. He's eating her. Please, God, no, please. Okay, I need you to calm down for me. I know it's hard, okay? I know it's hard. But they're going as fast as they can your way, okay? Oh, my God, please, hurry. They tell them they got to shoot him because I tried stabbing him, and he's not, and it made him worse. Okay, Sandra. 
have them shoot them. They will. Sandra, I already have the fire department close by, okay? So as soon as the police gets there, the fire department is going to move in, okay? The fire department can't move in yet, but as soon as the police officers show up... Please tell them. Shoot him because he's going to try to attack me now. Just breathe, Sandra. Shoot him! Shoot him! Sandra, stay in your car. Shoot him! Sandra, I need you to stay in your car. Shoot him, please. I tried stabbing him, and, and he's hurt now, too. So, so he's going to attack anybody. I can't get out of this car. Lock your doors on your car and stay it, there with me. It don't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter. He will rip the doors wide open. Sandra, just do what I'm please, telling you to. Stay in the car. The police officers will handle it. Please tell him to shoot him. <laughs> please tell him. Please tell him to kill him, please. They did, Sandra. They're shooting at him already, okay? But he's not dead. I know. They will continue until he's dead, okay? I just need you to stay please on the phone with me and breathe. He's not dead. He's not dead. He's not dead. Oh, God. Oh, God. You guys, it's so brutal to listen to. It is so brutal to listen to. As you guys could hear, Travis came down and he attacked her. He ripped her face off, ripped her eyes out of the socket, ripped her nose off, ripped her ears off, ripped her hands off, and was eating it in front of Sandra. Her best friend is watching this happen. <gasps> Sandra went inside and grabbed a knife and came outside and she started stabbing him in the back. And she said that he just, Travis just looked at her like, mom, what are you doing? And she freaked out. Like he got, he got more irate with her friend when she was stabbing him. So she was calling 911 and she was like freaking out. Like you guys got to come. You guys, it took the police nine minutes to get there. When I was talking to my husband about this last week, I was like nine minutes. Do you know how long that is? Do you know? I mean, and I'm not saying anything bad about the cops. I have no idea. She could have lived at the top of a mountain. I have no idea where she lived at, but I'm just telling you guys, nine minutes is a long, long time when you're going through anything. If you've ever been in a fist fight, y'all know two minute long fist fight is a long fight. Okay. Nine minutes. When the cops got there, Travis came up to the cop car and you got to imagine what they're thinking. Like this, this chimpanzee's full of blood everywhere. He tries to open the cop car door and they're like, you know, shooken or whatever. And then he breaks part of the cop car and then they shoot him at close range. And this chimpanzee walked away. So this chimpanzee had been stabbed at this point multiple times in the back and they were deep stab wounds too. Okay. And shot multiple times. The chimpanzee Travis went back into the house and laid down in front of its cage and died right there. Oh my gosh, you guys, I just could not imagine the EMS. They picked Charlotte's body up and they rushed her to the hospital and by a Miracle. Savaged body was barely alive. She had no eyes, no nose, no mouth, and just the thumb on her right hand. A miracle. She was still alive. Like, I, I, I don't know. When you think about miracle, you guys, like, was it a miracle? I mean, of course, her life is still here and her daughter. But you think, like, if she was laying there alive while this chimpanzee was eating her. Oh my gosh, you guys. I just, oh. The doctors immediately started surgery. She had surgery for seven hours, just trying to keep her alive, basically. Again, like I said in the beginning, the paramedics, they all had to, the paramedics, the police officers, the, the doctors, they all had to have like counseling afterwards because of what they saw and what they saw this woman go through. Before I'd seen her for the first time, I was very afraid of what I was going to see because I had no idea what to expect. Charla went through a lot. She was actually able to get a face transplant. Now, the face transplant donor, they wanted to keep anonymous. They did not want this person's name ever to be out there, but she got a face transplant. Now, that is amazing. Like, incredible. You guys can look up some of her before and after pictures. I'm not really going to show a lot here because it's... 
I don't know, like it's, it's hard and she didn't, I don't know you guys, I don't know, but she was able to get a face transplant and she was able to get like glass eyes so she can look like she has a face, although she is blind. Her hands, they tried to give her a hand transplant, but she got infections in them and they immediately had to be removed. So she just doesn't have any hands. And now she's living in like an assisted living, living facility because I mean, she can't see and she doesn't have any hands and she needs help, which she, she has help all the time. And she's made like vast improvements. And she said the main reason why she wanted to have her face done and a face transplant was so she could eat food. For a long time, she had to live on a liquid diet and she said she just wanted to eat hot dogs and pizza again. Now, there was a lawsuit, a very large lawsuit. I wanna say, I think it was like a $50 million lawsuit that Charla's family tried to sue Sandra for. I mean, obviously medical bills everything. I mean, not only was this her friend, not only was her friend warned, it was also her employees. So it was a real, real, real mess. They ended up settling out of court for $4 million, which to me seems like nothing, nothing. I mean, there, no amount of money will ever, ever make up for what happened to Charla. None. However, like $4 million barely even covered her medical bills. I mean, she had a whole entire face transplant, you guys. Like, oddly enough, Sandra died like a year after this happened from a brain aneurysm. And when I heard that, I thought like, I am not surprised. Because you just can't imagine the stress this woman went through. Now, the, the real, real, real victim here is Charla. So I don't want to take anything from her at all. However you know, just human to human. I mean, I know that Sandra did a lot of things she shouldn't have done, and we'll get to a little bit more of that later, but just human to human thinking about what she went through when her daughter passed, okay, just a few years earlier, her husband then passed, then it's just her and Travis, and Travis, she witnesses this happening, Travis doing this to her friend, and then him being killed and her going, like, I mean, her having a brain aneurysm and dying to me just sounds like, like, of course she did. Like, after all of that, like, how do you, oh my gosh, you guys, it's so wild. Let's just, do you see why I told you guys ever since I heard this story years ago, right when I got out of prison, like on, I watched it on Oprah. Like, I just, I've never been able to forget about this because it is so insane. Now, I want to talk about some final thoughts here. One final thought is, you know, all of these, and, and no judgment to anybody. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to judge you. This is just my personal, the way I view things. Like, and I, listen, I see people online on Instagram and stuff all the time that have like these cute little, the cute little monkeys and stuff, like the real ones, like real alive monkeys, not stuffed animals. And they're so cute. They wear the little diapers. They jump around like... Those little guys are really strong too, okay? They are strong. You think they may not be because they're little. They are very, very, very strong. You have to think about a 14-year-old chimpanzee. I mean, he weighed 200 pounds and the strength of over five grown adults. Like this is a, this is a real live unpredictable animal. And when they did the autopsy on... Travis, they actually found traces of Xanax in his system. And she, Char Sandra, did not have a prescription for that. She admitted earlier that day that she had given him a Xanax tea because he was acting really jittery and she wanted to calm him down. I don't know this for sure, okay? This is my personal opinion. I think that she probably was taking them and she was like the same way she did with the wine, the same way she did with the lobster and the everything else. I think she thought, I'm going to sit over here and relax and have this Zanny tea. I'm going to let you have some too. And I think that chimpanzee lost his dog on mine because let me tell you something. Back in my old days, when I used to have friends and party all the time, I used to have friends that used to take those things in like quantities or whatever, and they would not remember anything that they did. They would do like, they would just do all kind of like stuff and just like completely black out and not remember anything. With that being said too, even giving the chimpanzee wine, I'm thinking, do, have, do you not see what human beings do when they're, when they drink too much sometimes? Not everybody. I mean, if you're a responsible adult, that's fine. Okay. But I know most of my fights, honey, have been when I was twisted. 
okay, drunk. When I got way too much liquor in my system back in the day, I was ready to go, baby, ready. And you giving that to a chimpanzee that like is a wild animal? And then you probably gave him some wine with some Xan, like, I don't know, it just sounds like a recipe for disaster for me. I, I don't, it just doesn't make any sense. There was also a story that another woman, I think her name was Connie, said years prior to this attack. She said that she had seen Sandra and Travis out. And she she says she walked up to the car and she asked if she could like shake his hand. And Sandra said yes. And when she stuck her hand in the car to shake Travis's hand, Travis snatched her arm in and bit her hand. Okay. Now Sandra severely took up for Travis. Let me show you guys this right here. I mean, she just went like this inside the car, not, not outside the car, inside, and it was a Corvette. You know, there's not much room. And I had somebody on the other side, Travis was sitting on his lap, and she just threw her hand right into... She was like, had Travis's back and made Connie seem like she had just done some horrible thing and stuck her hand in the car or whatever. But Connie said that she not only went to the police department, she said she reported this, like that, you know, this Travis, like, bit her hand. She drew, bl drew blood and that nobody did anything, okay? Nobody did anything because Travis was a local celebrity. So who all is to fault here? With that being said, too, Charla and her family tried to sue the, the state or the county or whatever it is, too, as well as suing Sandra, and she lost her case, which I think she should have won it because they didn't make her get this permit. They didn't make Sandra do all of the stuff that she should have done. Even when, you know, animal control was coming in and saying, listen, these animals, these grown chimpanzees, they need to be in the wild mating 50 times a day, all of this stuff. And they just let her have this chimpanzee because it was the local celebrity. She should have won that, that county or state case. And for my last little final thought here, I just think about the daughter, you know, her daughter. She was raised by her mom as a single mom, and then she went into the hospital, and her mom, you know, had been completely disfigured and mauled by this chimpanzee. But she lived, and she was so happy that she lived. And Charla attributes her strength to living through this for... Uh, to being her daughter, you know, being her strength and having her back. So they just went through so, 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 so much, you guys. Have y'all heard about this story? What do you think about it? I will leave some articles and some videos linked down below if you guys want to go and check out more. Like, whew, I will never forget the story. I heard it years ago of the woman who got her face ripped off by a chimpanzee. All right, you guys, as always, my loves, please do not forget to like this video. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. And until next time, I love you guys so, so, so very much. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye. Love you guys. Bye.